G'day everyone, welcome to the Creative Suite, episode 12. Here's your host, Mike McHugh. Sorry, I didn't see you all there. Only joking. I'd like to thank my studio studio audience again. Uh, what a great studio audience you are. They're too kind. Very, very much too kind. As a matter of fact, I was just, uh, I'll show you what I was doing. I was just reading the wonderful How to Wow with InDesign CS2 book. That is written by myself and Wayne Rankin, um, series editor Jack Davis, part of the How to Wow series of books. So if you're looking for a good InDesign book, there we go. Today's tip is a cracker. I promised last week that I was going to do an InDesign typography tip and I am not going to disappoint. Quite proud of this. I was inspired with something I saw uh, during the week. Here's the tip. The week. Hello, Google. Well, I have put in a little bit extra effort in this week and I've come up with a little bit of a layout. I've got some photographs here that I've taken and we're going to do a typography lesson in InDesign CS2 and I can't wait to get started because it's a little bit of fun and it's a little bit hip and groovy and that's just what I like. So we better get started uh, to explain what we're going to do here. We're going to put some text over the top of this image based on a series of lines and we're going to reverse the text or we're going to put the text over the top of those lines we're going to be all at angles and there's a couple of little tricks that I want to show you along the way so step number one is to draw some lines we're going to need to come over here to the toolbar where we've got uh, the line tool showing there and we can zoom in there and have a look there's the line tool so we're going to go ahead and select that um, and we're going to go ahead and draw our first line. I'm not going to hold the shift key down because I want it to be at a bit of a funny angle. We'll also go ahead and give it a bit of a weight there. So we'll make it a nice thick line because remember our text is going to go over the top of these lines. As a matter of fact, we should give it a bit of a color too. So we'll come down to our color swatch there. Let's just make it white, shall we? We'll hide that. And there we have our first line. We can make it longer and whatnot. We will use our direct selection tool. Of course, here's our direct selection tool there. Um, here it is there. Okay, so I've got mouse pose happening again today, as you can see. I'm going to move this line around, get it just the length that I want. We don't just have one line of text, though. We're going to have many. So let's go ahead and duplicate this line. Now, I'm going to use the alter the option key down. And you can use the shift key as well if you like. So it's Alt, uh, Shift or Option Shift. And click and drag to duplicate something in a straight line. So you can do that if you like. On the Mac, if you would like to duplicate that move or on the PC as well, there is, a, there is an option here called Transform Again, which is Command Option or Control Alt 3. So if I use that Control Alt or Command Option three 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 and you can see i can step and repeat that down the page that is pretty sweet next they're all too even we use the direct selection tool leaving our cursor right over the top selecting the next line we can then pick up these handles and then randomize them a bit so i'm selecting i'm making some longer i'm making them on different angles they can even touch each other it doesn't matter, we're not afraid of touching. So we can bring that one across and we'll get this looking a little bit more radical. And if we want to du duplicate another line, we'll just go ahead and do that Alt key down this time and we can click and drag that way. Uh, if we like, Alt, click, drag. There we go, we've got another one there. Pick it up, move it, whatever. The trick is going to be how to get our text to align to all of these. Well, we're going to use text on a path. That's right, folks. We're going to use text on a path. 
So under the Type tool, if I click and hold my mouse down, that's what that red circle means, I can come across here and select the Type on a Path tool. Okay? There it is there. It's type. It's on a little angle. Type on a Path tool. Let's zoom in. There you go. Type on a Path tool. We're going to use that, and we're going to go right ahead and click on every single one of these lines where we're going to put our text. Okay? So we have individual lines of text here. But I hear you ask, what if we want them all to be linked? Well, that's what this little square is for. So if you have a look, that is a linking port just like you find on any other normal text frame. It's a linking port. And what I can do is pick that up and click. And you see the little chain appears. And I can link between each of these lines of text. Click or what are going to be lines of text. And I've linked each of them together. Well, that is pretty sweet, Mike. I hear you saying. Well, it is sweet. Now we need some text. I'm just going to press W on the keyboard here. I have some text floating over here in the um, pasteboard area. I can link from this frame directly onto my text on a path. You might think, well, that's wonderful, Mike, but it doesn't put any text in there. It's because there's no text to go there. Let me show you something. Under the View menu, if I say Show Text Threads, you'll see that these are all linked together. What do you think would happen if I deleted this? Hmm, It's going to push all of the text onto our text on a path. And there we have it. Let's zoom in and have a really good look. So that is Apple Spacebar or Control Spacebar. Click and drag. We can zoom in and see our text on a path. Now I'm using a font here. This is called um, a Rockwell, so it's a nice looking font. It's not lined up with the middle of our text on a path, is it now? I select it all, Command A, will select all of the text, but it isn't lining up with the middle. We need to go ahead and go to Type on a Path and Options. That's Type on a Path, Options. Okay, we click it. Here's the tip. Underneath this, we can say align the center of the text to the path center and press OK. Let's deselect it and have a bit of a look. Oh, our text is wonderful. We can even make it a little bit bigger. So again, it's Command or Control A, um, Apple Shift or Command Shift greater than or full stop. And we'll make our text bigger. It can fit onto this. It looks wonderful. I think it's ridicul ridiculous that I've got hyphenation on. And there we go. We have text. We can pick this up. We can move it around. We can do whatever we like. But it's a groovy looking um, bit of text. I'll go back out of preview mode just so that we have a bit of a look at what we've done. It's pretty cool. I love it. It's text on a wonky path. That's it. All done. I really enjoyed doing that tip. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. I was inspired by some things I saw during the week. Uh, and it was just, uh, I think, a handy one. And I'm going to hopefully do a few more of those type of things coming up. That's an InDesign typography tip. I wonder what we'll have next week. I haven't thought of it yet. Uh, we might be back to Photoshop again or perhaps Acrobat. Eight, which I've managed to get my grubby little fingers on and I've been trialing that out as a matter of fact there's some great new features in there the Acrobat Connect is unbelievable uh, so I've got a little bit of a, a spiel on my blog on my website which you might want to have a look at about Acrobat Connect if you want me to do a lesson on Acrobat or Photoshop or InDesign or Illustrator or whatever part of the creative suite that you want to look at I can even do Photoshop elements if you're interested um, send, us a, send us a message through my website mcu.com.au and uh, you know who knows I might be able to do something for you now uh, I've got some events coming up the InDesign users group the first meeting in Melbourne on Thursday the 7th of December I'm just reading off my screen there uh, the Fuji Xerox is running another series with me hands on training in Sydney starting at the end of November so photo 